Sorry, everyone, if you've been waiting for us, thank you for joining. We appreciate you being here today. And we're excited about having some farmers here with us to share their experiences. And to get started, I'll introduce myself. My name is Shakira Regoza. I am the FSA Technical Assistant here at Young Farmers. And my role is to help farmers apply for USDA loans. And we have with us, we have three farmers who've gone through that process and they will be sharing with us their experiences and give us some tips and advice about how to fill out those applications ourselves. So um, the USDA has loans available that are uh, for low, um, for, with low interest rates. And the programs are available for farmers who can't find credit elsewhere. Meaning if you have no credit history or poor credit history in the past, it's still accessible to you, even if you're just starting up. And right now, uh, there are lending programs uh, designed for small farmers with uh, lower uh, lending amounts. And we'll get into that a little bit as we um, start the discussion today. I just want to start by um, addressing that we know in the past it may have been hard for many farmers, especially BIPOC farmers, to access these loans. Uh, we acknowledge that there has been a history of discrimination with USDA, and we have seen that their administration is making a lot of changes to make sure that everyone is able to access these loans. And right now with the coalition, we now, we're very excited to have on board on our staff, Ms. Ebony Stevenson, who is our USDA Access and Accountability Organizer. So whenever one of our farmers in our network has any issues, um, Ms. Ebony is there to make sure that they have um, equal access. So I like to uh, have Ms. Ebony spend some time introducing herself and let you know that she's a resource for you. Um, in the future as well. So Ms. Ebony Stevenson, would you like to introduce yourself today? Hey everybody, uh, my name is Ebony Two E's No I. Um, I am the USDA Access and Accountability Organizer here at Young Farmers. I am excited to be here. Um, I have an urban farming background. Um, I've been farming since high school uh, where I went to a vocational school and my major was horticulture. Um, and so that's how I got my start and so um, I've been farming here in Chicago um, in different uh, urban lots. Um, and I am really excited to be in this role to be able to um, provide um, educational and outreach support to farmers uh, in the Southeast, and then also serve um, as a resource for um, BIPOC farmers who have experienced or are experiencing uh, discrimination uh, with the USDA whether it's through uh, applying for any of the FSA loan programs or anything of that nature. So look at me as a resource um, and uh, my contact info will be shared at the end of the live. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ebony. And for just some background on the USDA Farm Service Agency loans, they are low interest lending options uh, you can use the loans to purchase land, but you can also use them for leasing property and for your operating costs. Uh, some of the things that I've been able to purchase um, with USDA loans are tractors, farmland, implements. Um, you can use the funds for labor costs, seeds, inputs. Um, there's a right wide range of things you can, can use these loans for. And so uh, they, they can be a real benefit for farmers. And I, I enjoy the fact that they are, they are for longer term periods, uh, seven to 30 years. And you can also make annual Payment, so you're not looking at a monthly payment like you would be with a traditional lender. And that kind of gives the farmer some time to collect the, the payment during the, the growing season. So there are several benefits for the 
FSA loans. And I can help you if you have any questions or like to apply for those programs. Um, as the technical assistant, I can walk you through the, the forms and uh, connect you with your local office. All right, so let's meet our farmers. Um, excited to have all of uh, them here with us today. Um, we will first hear from, well, we'll introduce each of our farmers. We have uh, Rachel and Stu with Southwest Black Ranchers in Arizona. We also have uh, Alicia Salvas from Radical Roots in Connecticut and Willie Bradford with Bradford Farm in uh, Mississippi. So thank you all for joining us. Um, just gonna take a, some time for each of you. If you could introduce yourself, uh, share with us about uh, your farm and how did you hear about USDA loans and which one did you apply for just to start? So we'll, we'll uh, turn the, some time to Rachel and Stu, if you guys wanna introduce yourselves first. Uh, yeah, I'm Stu, um, father and founder of the Southwest Black Ranchers. Uh, the name basically comes from the lack of the black farmers and ranches in the state of Arizona. Uh, most black ranches and farms are in the South. So we kind of want to make a presence and bring uh, awareness to the fact that there's no black ranches and farms really out here. So it's kind of the name. Uh, primarily we do goat, lamb, uh, duck eggs, we, or goat and lamb meat. Uh, do duck eggs as well as our primary products. And we're looking to uh, get the meat processing as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we went from um, urban farming to rural farming now. And um, our loan, or Stu's loan that, um, that he applied for and is approved now and is processing um, was for um, a land and for a farm for the direct ownership loan for the farm. So we're able to um, grow and expand because we've been um, dry farming on raw land and hauling water for the past few years. So it's going to be a nice move. <laughs> wow, that's that's a, a congratulations. I can't imagine hauling water for, for that long. So way to stick it in there. I'm, I'm happy for you guys. Um, and so how did you learn about the USDA loans? Oh, uh, well, a long time ago, when we, well, not a long time ago, it's not been that long. A couple of years ago, when we first got out here, there was a, a guy by the name of Dr. Frank Pinkerton who uh, does goats. He's like one of the top goat people in the country. He was trying to help us get the loan. Uh, we ran into a little bit of issues with the guy in our county and he kind of just pushed off. So he, but we didn't look into the loan or what he was looking into too much. And then from there, uh, we met another gentleman who said that they got the loan. And so we mm -hmm. kind of looked into it some more and it was like, all right, we'll just go ahead and apply for it. And somebody else um, who works for the USDA um, for the NRCS had told us about the loans as well when we met her in 2022. So it's like we'd heard about them, but it's almost like you think these things are too good to be true, you know, or you just automatically like write it off. Like you won't qualify. You know what I mean? You're not going to give me any money. Well, you, so. you hear all the negativity about them. <laughs> <laughs> they always, you know, I mean, and then you find, well, you find that a lot of the stuff you go through, <laughs> a lot of it's true, but <laughs> you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, they have a book and you got to know their book. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, we're happy that it's, it's going, you know, we're happy to be a part of things and we're happy that, um, that the government and these things are working um, together on this. So we're, and we're grateful to work with young farmers on it too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Shakira, you're on mute. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Rachel and Stu. We're gonna give some time to Alicia if you can share a little bit about your farm and how do you learn about the loans and um, how they've helped you. Hi everyone, my name is Alicia Salvis. Um, I own uh, Radical Roots Farm in Connecticut. Um, we originally started on four acres. Um, we worked over a couple of years to acquire the animals that we've researched. We do um, beef, pork, chicken, uh, turkeys. Um, and we, we did a little bit of everything at the beginning. Um, and our herd just got too big. 
uh, for the property and we practice rotational grazing and everything um, regenerative farming from the beginning so we had a good background um, when applying for the loan um, I found out about it through um, when I was applying for a farm credit and they had a lot of requirements for um, for like your business plan and stuff and after being in operation, we really didn't have a business plan. So um, going through the steps of filling it out with them um, worked out well in our favor um, because during the pandemic, um, everything just got a little bit crazy for them. Uh, so for us, they were like, well, we don't have enough staff to be able to, to do your loan. Like we, we there's no way. So um we ended up talking to them they got us hooked up with the usda um we applied for a um, ownership loan um for an 84 acre property um and it's worked well for us uh we ended up getting an operating loan for fencing as well and now we have 84 acres of raw land um we also have had our struggles with uh, getting water to the animals and getting the electricity set up here for fencing. But we finally, after eight and a half months, we got electricity installed um, here and we're still pulling water from the well, uh, the hand dug well that was on the property. Uh, but our herd has grown to over 45 cattle and we have a couple hundred pigs here and quite a bit of chicken. So things are going great. Well, congratulations, Alicia. That is that's wonderful. And finally, things are falling into place for for you all due to that the FSA loan. So you have a ownership and operating loan. So that's 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 great. Yeah. And so the, then, um, the terms, go ahead. The, the terms for the operating loan for the um, the fencing and stuff is only I want to say it's like two or three years. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of it like spreads it out a little bit, but at the same time, you know, you're not like tied down for like 15 years, you know? Right, yeah, that's another benefit there that you do have some flexibility with the the terms. And I think yeah. the low interest rates is like, I wanna say ours is like one and a half percent on the fencing. Yeah. So it's not, it's not anything crazy, you know? Like it's, it's a really good, you can't go wrong with it, you know? Yes. It's a really good rate. All right, um, Willie, are you here with us? Willie Bradford is coming from Mississippi. If you can share a little bit about your experience, uh, how did you learn about the USDA loans and which one did you apply for? Okay, great, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, got you. Yeah, I, I got started in high school. Um, I actually applied for the, the youth loan, 17 and 18. And so that was my story. I was fortunate enough to, um, like I said, I'm from a small town. I was fortunate enough to uh, get get um, affiliated with a community that um, educated me about all the different loans available. So um, I got started in high school. I purchased a couple of cattle, um, maybe just two or three. I think the loan was like five thousand dollars, maybe. It was very. It wasn't hard at all for me because I was kind of trained already about what they they're looking for. And exactly how to format my paperwork and things of that nature. So um, I graduated from college and I came home and I uh, one of my first things I wanted to do was pay that youth loan off. And so I paid the youth loan off, and then shortly after I applied for the micro loan. I think it was fifty thousand dollars maybe, and I used that to buy more cattle and um, purchase tractors and fence work and stuff like that. Um, I mean, from my experience, I, I've been fortunate enough to have pretty good luck dealing with the USDA so far. Hello? Hey, Shakira, if you're talking, you're on mute. I think frozen. All right. Am I on now? <laughs> Your face isn't moving, but <laughs> we can hear you partially.
Um, okay, now you're moving. I was saying that was the first. Okay. <laughs> okay, Shakira, you're breaking yes. up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you you um, kind of sound like Darth Vader. Excited Vader. to hear that uh, someone is taking advantage of the youth loans. How about this? <laughs> oh no! Let's see. Is that a little better? Yes, that's much better. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you everybody for sharing a little bit about your farms and how you learned about USDA and which ones you've taken advantage of uh, programs being represented here from ownership loans and microloans. So there's a lo lot of different programs available to, to help you with your uh, farms and growing your, your business, whether it's a small loan, a mini loan of 5,000 or 50,000 up to, I believe up to 600,000 loans that are um, $600,000 loans that are available. So I know some of you may have mentioned that you had faced some struggles from working with the USDA, whereas like the paperwork or or getting in touch with the offices. Um, could you speak a little bit about what are some of the barriers you see to beginning farmers, uh, young farmers accessing these programs? And what are what did you do to overcome some of those, those challenges? When any, anyone can speak to that if they, they wanna go ahead and jump in. Uh, I'll just say, um basically getting the right person on the other end is kind of important too because there's a just like for instance uh when you get when you get the loan they put personal uh cost into the loan which they don't typically do so they do operate a little different than a traditional loan and if you're not being brought aware of those things then you'll have you know some issues with that especially if you got children because the more heads you got the higher that expense that they say you're income and cost of living is, which goes into your business plan. So just knowing that is just something that I would say, and just kind of the rules and like research everything that they require before you just necessarily go in. Mm -hmm. and, and during the, um, the, the process, um, we had to, what is it called? Reconsideration. Uh, we had two reconsiderations. So those are things that I recommend um, not taking lightly. Can you guys hear us okay? Yeah, okay. I, I recommend not taking the reconsideration lightly and doing everything you can, reaching out to like young farmers, you know, or, or finding somebody who can kind of um, guide you through the process, who's been through the process. Um, there were parts when they were saying, you know, they're, they don't know the answer or they're, they're acting like they had to figure it out. So when you can talk to another party and kind of gauge, sometimes it's hard to understand their answers. So when you, when you have somebody else who's been through it, who can kind of tell you, oh no, this is what's supposed to happen. This is what it's supposed to be like. Um, it, it helps a lot. Well, one, of, one of the things I would say is a bear from me just um, encouraging my friends to kind of get involved at a young age is the requirements that they have. Um, when you're applying for these loans, you know, you have to have a certain amount of years of experience. And if you're not uh, fortunate enough where your family was in the farming or you had someone that introduced you to it, then it's hard to get a start when you don't technically have the experience and be able for the, the different programs that's available. And what are some of the some ways that beginning farmers can can gain that experience or how how did you get your experience going in? Well, I, I joined um, I, I joined 4-H um, because that was that was one of the requirements, I think, for the youth loan is I, I joined 4-H and I gained experience that way. And 
and I just I just kind of mentored uh, other farmers in my community that I knew of, and you know I didn't charge them anything. Was just trying to get educated and get in the business, and that that helped me uh, helped me out a whole lot. One of the things that I think, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say that one way to meet that requirement now they have available is a mentor. So if you can get someone to sign on with you as a mentor, that's another option when, for showing um, experience. That's great. And, um, and I was gonna say, we, we took a lot of um, classes from places to find out about the process. Um, I think, um, so we learned and heard about the programs that were available and then um, getting the business plan ready. We talked with the SBA and we talked with um, the local small business development center, um, working with a mentor for on the business plan um, through ag, finding out like what the type of um, plans they're looking for. So that way we can make sure that we try to meet those needs and a lot of cooperative extensions, um, they'll have business plans for your niche because every area in ag is different. So the cooperative extensions are really great places too. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. We need to know that there are some resources available in our communities to help us get started. I know that business plan is key going in for when you go to apply for a loan. They do want to see that you're able to repay the loan and they will ask you for your financial. So if you're thinking about these uh, USDA loans, I would highly encourage you right now to start um, working on your books. Um, know what your um, expenses are going in um, and what your expected income, even what, who are your, your uh, potential markets. Um, they will look for all of that. And like was mentioned before, they do take into account your personal and family expenses as well. So it'll be good to get a good hand on that going in too. So I know that um, there is help uh, with the extension office and some of the uh, local universities in your area might have a, a business development that can help with that, the business plan side. And I'm happy to help you fill out the forms. You can submit your own business plan, but USDA does have a business plan like worksheet as part of the loan application. And those forms are all available on uh, farmers.gov. So if you're interested, you can go and take a look at what they're asking before you go in and, and that'll help you be better prepared. Um, Alicia, you mentioned that you were working with um, a credit company or credit um, organization. How did they help you prepare and um, go going forward for your loan? Um, they just asked a lot of questions, you know, like they asked um, a lot of, so we started with um, Farm Credit East because we were thinking that that was the only way that we could go. Um, seeing the application from USDA is kind of like intimidating because it's, it's huge and it's a lot of pages. And at first we were just like, how are we ever gonna fill this out? But I think like the best advice I can give is to just do one thing at a time and just like, I don't know, just take your time on it because they're like, don't be afraid to ask questions um especially to your loan officer and stuff um they they helped me put together a lot of it and told me like what was good and some concerns that they had about certain things so it kind of helped me with presenting it to um um the underwriter and everything thank you for sharing that yes yeah, so going in uh beforehand is, is really helpful um, you can turn in your application, complete, uh, and, and they will re review it for you. Some of the things that they do ask you when you go in, there's a form that has your contact information, your business structure, if you are a um, sole proprietorship versus an LLC, and LLCs can apply for the um, USDA loans. The only organizations not eligible are nonprofits. So, um, so if you have a family farm, if you're sole proprietor LLC, 
you can apply for those loans. Um, they'll ask for your tax um, identification number, your, um, your business structure, and they also will request if you have, um, they'll ask for your, your farm uh, experience, managerial or spinner experience that we've talked about already here today. And also they'll ask you for your debts, if you have any debts at open right now or any past um, history of, um, of debts and student loans, those things are taken into consideration. And they will also ask you about the property that you're interested in purchasing or, or leasing. And I know some, Times uh, these programs are a little bit longer than your traditional bank. So the, it does take them uh, about, at the most, they have 60 days to review the application and get back to you. I know right now the market is pretty high. It's um, very competitive. So um, FSA does require farmers to apply with a purchase agreement. So you won't lose out on a on an opportunity while your paperwork is being processed. So that's another um, thing to keep in mind as you're looking into the purchasing uh, uh, loans or ownership loans is to try and uh, prepare as much as you can in advance. And, and when you're ready, go in with the purchase agreement. So while FSA is considering your application, you'll still have that property uh, available for, for you. Um, you know, Going in, they have 60 days to review your, your case and, and review your financials. They will, if you um, have an officer that's there available, go and, and address some of the issues that they see. And, but there could be opportunities um, for, there are chances that the first time around your application might not be approved. And um, Rachel was sharing some information about reconsiderations, what to do. Um, if your loan application um, is not approved. Uh, Rachel, can you share a little bit about your experience with the reconsideration process? Um, what steps should someone take or what steps should you take when you received um, your, your um, decision from the USDA? All right, so uh, kind of like the way that process was, was then you, once they give you the rejection, uh, you look over, it tells you why they denied you. And then if you feel that there, there was something that was incorrect on their behalf, you can request them to do a reconsideration. So uh, through that process, then they get, an, I guess it's additional 30 days. And then if the reconsideration is approved, then they move forward to the next step. And then if not, I guess you got to fix whatever the uh, situation with the reconsideration, uh, reconsideration was. But if you have something that, that shows that, you know, what they clearly shows that their decision was not necessarily the correct thing, then it can be reversed. Or not reversed, but they move forward. Yeah. So, and it, it happened twice and it was hard, but it was, um, we were able to get past it. So I would just say, don't give up. Um, or, I mean, if you can't say don't get discouraged because you can get discouraged through these processes, but um, when you meet people who have gone through it or who support you um, and, you're, and you're continually applying, um, that, that helps things move forward a lot. And um, I, we're really grateful, like I said, for our relationships that we've built with these places. It's not like you're alone in the process because um, it feels like that sometimes. So when you have other people um, who, who make you feel like it's not, you're not so alone, you're not, you got this, it's not the end, um, that you can still move forward or try to find a way. Um, because hopefully the goal is that um, people can get more farms, you know, and produce more food, you know, is the goal, hopefully. With Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Stu and Rachel, for sharing that. And so we want to encourage everyone to go out for these opportunities with the USDA. Um, if you get some roadblocks along the way, we're here to help you with the application process. And if you come up across a time when you need to apply for a reconsideration, 
Uh, we do have staff here available and other organizations that we work with that are able to work with you one-on-one -on -one to improving your business plan and addressing some of those issues. And if you do come across a time when you do feel like you have faced discrimination from your local office, there are steps to take. Um, we have Ms. Ebony Stevenson here. She um, has, has worked um, elevating a lot of cases up to uh, state levels. Um, you're not just limited um, with the staff at your, your local office. Um, there is a process um, where you can reach to your, you can reach out to your state um, state um, FSA leaders, uh, and also um, you can also elevate that to the national level if you feel like there is um, cases of discrimination. This new administration is taking all of these um, cases very seriously and looking into them. And so, just don't get discouraged. Know that there is uh, assistance right now um, for navigating all these USDA programs um, and the loans. So. Uh, just for farmers starting out, if you, you know, we talked about a lot of paperwork, but there is a program available, which is the microloan program that's for farmers um, just starting out. It's for 50,000, so it's a small loan, but I believe the application's only two pages, the, the main part of it. So I like, uh, Willie, if you can share a little bit about the, the microloan program and and the process to, to apply for that one. Yeah, I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was designed to be uh, very accessible and very easy for uh, people to complete. Um, I applied for it. I'm not sure if the max was 50,000 or not, but I applied for the $50,000 and I think you're right. It's only a couple pages and it's very, it's very simple and straight to the point. Um, I didn't have any problems at all applying. And um, it's, it's one of those loans where uh, I use it to purchase. I think you, you can purchase equipment. You can purchase um, produce, uh, just anything dealing with farming. So it's, it's a very good loan. It's very, it's very easy. And it, it doesn't require all the paper, paperwork as the, the other loans may have. Yes. And so with that one, um, how, long, how long is that? The term on the microloan? Um, I think it's seven years. I want to say it's seven years and you make, um, like you mentioned earlier, is you make yearly payments once a year. So that, that's a good thing. You don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about making a note every month. You can, whenever you sell your, you know, your cattle or your your food or whatever, you can make it at that time. So that's another good benefit of it also. Yes, those that those uh, terms are, are really nice. And um, I know with these FSA loans, just so you know, they're, they do try to, they understand the farming business. So you have that annual payment and they, they understand the, the growing process. And, um, but there's also additional help when you are working with USDA loans. I know we've had ups and downs with the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of farms were um, had uh, some struggles with that. And also with some of these climate uh, changes that we see with uh, fires or, or um, hurricanes and freezes that um, USDA takes that into account and they are flexible with farmers. They have programs uh, called disaster set aside programs that will allow farmers who are facing struggles to defer payments on, on that. So I know some farmers might be concerned about going in there and taking on debt, but um, that's another benefit with working with USDA is that you have these lenders that understand the, the business and um, they are flexible when when we encounter challenges, they want the farmers to, to keep their farms. And so those uh, options are available. Um, so keep that in mind too, as you consider applying that there's help as well. Um, we want to make sure everyone's aware that these programs are out there. And we have staff here, myself and Ms. Ebony here to help you with the application process. Um, we will see if, if the farmers have any other last tidbits of advice. Um, for those looking to access these programs. Hi, Shakira. Yes, it's Rachel Stewart. Um, I wanted to say these 
are the best lending programs you're going to find. So there's no grants that are going to give you infrastructure, livestock, or land. So seeing like, like these are the ways to get those things. And I do encourage anybody to apply for these loans because um, this is how you can get a farm. Build well, this is how you build general. And I, and I recommend um, and I encourage people to take their farming as a business, you know, take treat it as a business, take it seriously. And these programs are there. This administration um, has shown us that they are really trying to make things different. Um, so we really recommend everybody to try to take advantage of this um, as much as possible. Oh, and then uh, real quick, just when you're doing the business plan with them, if you don't have any contracts or previous things showing what you're, you're, you're selling your products for, what you'll have to, what they'll do is they'll go through the corporate extent, local extension office to find what the prices are in your area. So if you don't have any prices that you're doing set for your business plan, instead of going with what you feel that you can sell it for, you can go to the corporate extension and see what they will they'll rate those products at. And then you can have a better opportunity to make it a stronger business plan. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Yes. Thank you. Do we have any questions coming in so far from our audience? You guys out there on Facebook um, thinking about going for some of these loans? This is a good opportunity to ask some questions while we're, we're still here. I know for myself going into these uh, programs, I did not have the opportunities that are available now to work through those business plans. So that's that's really important that now we have these resources that was that were mentioned, like the business development and also the extension office. In, we as uh, specialty crop growers, niche niche farm businesses, we know what we can get for our with for our products. And that's not always reflected in the USDA data that's on file um, or county rates, county prices. So if you do keep records for those contracts, uh, those would be great. I know for us as a beginning farmer, we actually had to provide our CSA membership contracts for all the members in our CSA. But th that showed that we already had a commitment from the customer. So anything like that is, um, that's beneficial for you going in and checking out the county extension offices and prices like that. So all of those are, are great resources to, to check going in. And reach out to your local USDA office. Um, some of the offices are able to help you one-on-one -on -one if they, they do have a uh, time to do that. But if not, you know, we're here to help you as well. But we wanna encourage everyone to go out and, and not be afraid to make that first um, initial um, contact. And you can find your local USDA office at the site I mentioned before, farmers.gov. And you can search your local service center. So um, please feel free to reach out, give them a call. Um, you can chat with them uh, over the phone, by email, um, by appointment. You can go in face-to-face uh, -face and meet with them. They can, you know, chat with you about what your operation is, what are your farm goals, and share some programs that will be beneficial. We've talked about here youth loans, micro loans, operating loans, ownership loans, but there's a lot of other programs available like the guaranteed loans right now. The rural development is offering some 90% uh, guarantees for some uh, loans for, for farmers getting credit through traditional traditional banks or, or lenders. So USA does offer some uh, loan backing programs as well. There's a uh, facility and storage uh, loans. So there's a lot of different options and going into that office would be a good way for you to explore those with your local office. So we have one question in, it says, um, let's see. Okay, let's see. So we'll try and get up a, a link about um, the USDA loans that we have available. And we'll, we can post some of that information um, uh, on our 
on our page later. So they'll all be available for everyone. But a lot of information is available at the farmers.gov uh, webpage. So we'll try and have all of these um, extra information uh, available. My contact, um, Shakira at youngfarmers.org. Um, also Ebony with two E's um, at youngfarmers.org. We're available to help you. And I have a, a direct line at 518. 643-3564 at extension four. So also feel free to give me a call. All right. Hey Shakira, um, I think they clarified, uh, they were asking about uh, a question about the pricing. Okay, so there was a question about pricing and where to get pricing information for yeah. your business plan. Okay, so there is the USDA um, um, Agriculture Marketing Services, um, USDA AMS. They have uh, wholesale market prices that are updated weekly. They also have retail pricing available for specialty crops, conventional, organic. Um, those are available online. Also at your local university extension offices, they will also have some uh, pricing information for you and can assist you with enterprise business plans for, for your specific um, operation. And you can also show your pricing based on your sales, any invoices, contracts that you might have available. Those are all great resources for showing your pricing on your business plan. And just a note, a side note, I encourage everyone to, when you receive these surveys, to participate in USDA surveys. I know they can be um, time consuming maybe at times, but as you share your data that, that um, updates their, their records. So when we go in and apply for loans, if we fill out the organic survey or we're filling out all these other census surveys, they can see that the prices are changing and, and that's being reflected. So when you go in to apply, they have up-to-date data as well. So that's just another side note. So if there aren't any other questions um, coming in, just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, thank you, Alicia. Um, and thank you, Willie and Rachel and Stu for joining us today. I appreciate you. We congratulate you on all of your work that you're doing and, and being able to secure funding for your farms. And we wish you the best. And, and we're here also to support you as you move forward. And thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone. This concludes our Facebook Live on FSA loans. We invite you to reach out to your local office, reach out to us and um, wish you guys the best in your, your farming, uh, farming ventures. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Y'all be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.